I'm Lawrence Tuba, and we're here to talk about my stage rig. And starting off uh, with the guitar itself, uh, a signature OM from Martin in Koa. Uh, this was a choice uh, as an experiment to see uh, how well it would work, and I'm very pleased with it in terms of its sonic range that it um, doesn't has warmth without having too large a bottom end, which then becomes problematic um, for, uh, for amplification purposes. Um, I'm running a DTAR wavelength pickup with a custom Omni Audix microphone. Uh, the microphone used to be mounted right behind the X-Brace right here. Um, or rather, in front of the x brace uh, But just by some accident, my tech put it in the wrong place, and it ended up, I think it's laying about there along a back brace. And I rather like what that does sonically. But, but for me, for many, many years, I've, I've, I've really needed the, the dual system because I need the ability to capture body resonance too, not only for anything percussive, but also what I call the virtual whammy bar. Get those, those little warbles and chorusy things that an acoustic guitar naturally does and that an undersaddle pickup doesn't always capture. Um, I, amazingly, all of this is running inside the guitar on two AA batteries. They use a voltage doubler and that provides phantom power to the microphone too. Um, and having an Adirondack top Adirondack spruce top on a, on a guitar, I think, helps also because the guitar then becomes naturally megaphonic. Um, that there's a certain kind of projection that is built into the sound of the instrument. Uh, the next most important thing is the cable. Uh, I'm using a, a high grade custom cable from Megami. Uh, it's a dual cable, so I'm running both the pickup and the microphone down the line so I can mix those independently. Um, the, it's not a very long cable either, just 10 feet. I try and keep it short, both because it's easier to transport a shorter cable. They get, um, my cables always get um, tangled up, and I, I, I like a short cable because it's easier to control. Um, and then uh, that's running into a headway preamp, an EDB1, which um, is an English-made preamp. Uh, I've been involved over the years with various different companies in, in the design end of, uh, of preamps. And I've, I've used probably five or six different blending preamps. And I found this one to be really very musical. Um, my, my criteria is how long does sound check take? And if it's anything more than 15 minutes, then the box is probably too fiddly or it's not doing what I need it to do. What I'm trying to do is just have the PA as much as possible reproduce what I hear coming out of the instrument. And that way I don't have to play any differently when I'm being amplified. The, the, that's another criteria for me is do I have to change my attack in order to accommodate the system, and I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just play into a microphone. Um, and in a sense, I am, because I'm using probably 60% of the sound is the internal mic uh, versus the undersaddle pickup. Um, I use very little EQ, very little EQ indeed. Uh, if, if necessary, I might roll off some low mid-range. Um, <laughs> somewhere in that frequency range, just but very, very slight. Um, this preamp has a high pass filter, meaning that it has a, a bass roll off. Right now we are listening to it in, with, with a roll off below 100 cycles, but like this is flat, which adds the extra octave of low end. Um, and venues can be it's very specific to the venue. Some venues will have subwoofers, but they can't really control them. So you, you can't ask the engineer to turn down the subwoofer. So that's where having a, the ability to roll off the bottom end can be really effective. Uh, this box also has what they call a violin setting, which rolls off below 200. That I rarely use. More typically, I have it in the guitar setting. Um, 
And then if I do need a little extra bass roll off uh, because of a bassy room, for example, then I'll use the low setting on this, which would actually take quite a bit of low end out of it. And, uh, but I try and use minimal EQ. In fact, what I often do is just slightly adjust the ratio between the pickup and the microphone. If I feel that it's a little thin, a little rattly, then I'll, I'll adjust it and give it a bit more meat out of the pickup. The pickup by itself the mic by itself neither of those is is perfect but the combination of the two just gives me something quite controllable and then just very slight differences depending on the room uh, even depending on, on the, uh, the, uh, the ambient temperature. I mean, uh, some phenomenon that you might notice, for example, you play at a, an outdoor festival and you'll sound check when the sun is shining and the air temperature may be in the 80s or 90s sometimes. And then you get on stage and the sun's gone down and the temperature drops and then the low end changes um, because the... Uh, air function works differently. Um, the frequencies travel differently through the air at lower temperatures, and there's a certain dampening factor on the bass. Same thing happens in the room. I might set things at sound check, and then you fill the room with people, and the and the sound changes. So I'm I'm always prepared to make a little tweak here or there. Um, I don't run any effects. Uh, mostly I try and do it with my fingers, but uh, I add a little reverb at the board. Usually I ask for medium hole, 1.8 seconds is about the typical typical setting. Um, I, this has a notch filter, for example, but I rarely use it. In fact, I never use it. I, you know, I'm more likely, if there's a real feedback issue, I'll just t ask the engineer to turn the volume down because typically over amplification is is a, sometimes more of a problem than under amplification. And if all else fails, I'll grab the vocal mic and stick it in front of the guitar because uh, that gives me, you know, I, I'm confident enough in what's coming out of the instrument that that gives me something functional. And, you know, if I have an opportunity to play in a venue where I don't need amplification, I'll, I'll readily take that um, because I'm not relying on a signal path to accomplish what I do. I, I really try and make it all built in to the arrangements themselves. Uh, so if I need a chorus sound, you know, I'll add it here rather than kicking in a pedal. Which isn't to say that I'm not a gearhead, because you know, as an electric guitar player, I have you know, just cupboards full of pedals of all different kinds of vintages and analog and digital and everything else. And I, you'll notice, I mean, this really is, is a non-digital signal path. The only digital thing is my tuner, the Peterson clip-on tuner, which doubles as a bow tie, of course. Um, and much to the chagrin of marching guitars, it tends to obscure the, uh, the logo. But uh, that's just kind of, that's an occupational hazard, I guess. And, and it, uh, also what I like about the Peterson is it doesn't rattle. It, it doesn't add some extra artifact to the sound. So that pretty much is it. You know, a great guitar, um, a good cable. You'd be amazed at what difference the cable can make if you've got a, a good cable. cable but, but be careful with them because they're, they're delicate. They're not, you know, a lot of these high-end cables aren't really designed to be dragged around on the road. Uh, the Headway preamp, it's light. It does the job for me. Um, it's I'm not giving it a wholesale endorsement because everybody has a slightly different need. And for example, this doesn't have an effects loop, doesn't have a mutable tuner output. Um, but in terms of just pure preamp and, and taking what's coming out of the guitar and giving me a little bit more control, does the job fine. But I've been on stage where I, I just, I have a dual cable with two jacks at the end and I'll plug into two decent direct boxes and that'll be the sound. But then I don't get the mute switch, which I like on this. That gives me the chance to just mute it for silent tuning, um, which is, you know, again, that's part of the stagecraft of it. Um, but beyond that, I think um, that pretty much sums it up. It's pretty minimal. 
and I, I can travel with it and it doesn't add a great deal of weight and you know with a, a box of 30 CDs weighing about seven pounds I, yeah, I'd rather put that extra weight into some extra merchandise to be honest. <laughs>